you don't have to be perfect to be the right person for the job, for the role, for the position. Welcome to another episode of Women Investing in Women. Robin and I are always excited and honored to week after week feature different women from different walks of life, to have conversations about how they are making it in the world, who are the women who are lifting them up, how are they turning around and paying it forward and pulling other women up. The image you get from our episode premiere music is the video is a woman going up a, a hill or a mountain and as she goes up she's pulling another woman up and every woman like a chain is pulling another woman up robin and i envision a day where women can seamlessly do that and we don't have to worry about how many seats are at the table we build our own table we take our own chairs and we make our own environment so that together we go further for longer. And today to have this amazing conversation about women investing in women is Maddie. Uh, Maddie, welcome to Women Investing in Women. It is such a joy to have you. Thank and you, Cass, for letting me join you today. Thank you. And as we get started, I know you are passionately committed to helping women of all walks of life regardless of the wrapping packaging they come in. What makes you passionate about helping women, whether they are minority in any way underrepresented or undersupported? What makes you passionate about doing this? So, you know, for me personally, so I'm Mexican American, I know my last name may not reveal that, but I actually come from very humble beginnings. My, my parents were migrant workers. They picked cotton in the fields. And my father, as, as some may say, broke the chain. He actually fought to go to school later in life. And because of him, I am where I am. But even entering into IT, into the business sector, and I've been here for quite a long time, I never would have gotten where I am if it hadn't been for all of the people who have helped me along the way. And there are so many, it's, it's women, it's, it's men, it's outside influences, it's people within the company. I've had mentors, I've had executive coaches, I've had even just watching podcasts like this and reading materials. So much has been given. And, and I'm at that point in time in my life where I really, really want to give back and I want to help because there's so many opportunities for women, for people of color, for people who are underrepresented to break through because the company, honestly, we all need that. Corporate America needs that diversity. And there's still quite a few pockets out there that it doesn't exist. So for that reason, I'm starting to invest a lot of my own personal time, effort and energy into what can I do to give back? Mm -hmm. That's really beautiful. Um, uh, uh, most of the guests that we have on are specifically tied to an organization where they're specifically only focusing on women. But you come to us, and I love this, where you're in like a regular organization, but yet you're looking around saying, who are the women in this organization that I can serve, that I can mentor, that I can partner with? And what are some of the, the, the things, as I heard a little bit of frustration in your voice, what are some of the things that like frustrate you about either seeing the women in the organization, either how they're being treated or maybe how they themselves are not stepping into uh, opportunities, um, maybe from being timid or, or, or for whatever reason. And so what is it that you, that you look around your organization, you say, okay, here, here are some things, some, some things I need to, to help with. Yeah, it's interesting you say that. So, and it is, it comes from two different sides, right? I, I work for a large technical company and like most, it has been male dominated. And because of that, and, and I'm not going to be, um, I don't want to put a generic, you know, label or anything, but, but there are quite a few still where 
quite a few meetings where I come in and I'm the only woman in the room. And you can tell from some of the men in the room that I'm, I'm dismissed. And so there's a little bit of frustration I have about being dismissed. Um, simply, I think, because I, I maybe don't look the part that I'm expected to look, right? Even a long time ago, I was told by, and I, I hate to say who told me this, you guys would die, by my mother, that, you know, Miha, she would tell me, <clears throat> this is early, early on, you want to look the part, you know, you need to you need to be in a pencil skirt, you need to have short hair, pearl earrings, like you need to be very, very little makeup, like you, she was trying to get me to conform to some kind of stereotype. And I think what frustrates me is intelligence, creativity, um, being able to give so much to an organization, it doesn't matter what the outward appearance looks like. So I get a little frustrated, now there are some amazing gentlemen in the organization that I've, I've, I'm in now and that I've been with that have helped. And that's part of why I'm here. But the other part is that we hear all this. And just like I told you with my mother, I'm not throwing her under the bus. It's how she was raised. We come to the table with all this baggage and all this preconceived notion for years. I thought I couldn't be a leader because I didn't look the part because I wasn't the right person. And over the years, I've had people try to tell me how to conform. And I think that's what I, the part that's easier to influence, Robin, is what comes from within, right? So if I can help women understand and, and try to shift what's inside, that'll help them. I can't, I can help, I can try to influence the people around, but I'm not going to be there with every single woman helping them coach them with the men, and I can't coach the men. But what I can do is try to teach them some of the things that I've learned that really changed the way I look at business, the way I look at these conversations with, you know, like I said, me and all these men and in, in, in still in, it changed the way I approach it. It's taught me how to challenge things. It's given me confidence. And it's also somehow given me a sense of peace because there's also this, this, a, anxiety that goes on with women when they try to confirm, conform, right? You get a little bit nervous. You get a little anxious all the time. Am I doing it right? So if you, until you get to peace with who you are, I don't think you can get there and then you really can't shine. So does that answer your question? Absolutely. Yeah. So beautifully said, Maddie. And it totally resonates for me personally, because I am in international finance. It's definitely a man's world. And I became a young CFO at 32 and everybody else on the senior team were Irish Catholic men over 55 and everybody assumed I was the CFO secretary because what else would I be, right? So we have running jokes about till today. That was years ago. So I fully resonate with what you're saying and being yourself and bringing the power from within is what's going to make you successful. So I'm sure you have two or three lessons learned you will pass on to others. Uh, we were talking about this before the program started. So what are those three lessons you would like to impart and how is that going to help shape every person's perception of who they are and show up in their own power instead of becoming something they're not? So, and, and you're right, there's a lot of, a lot of things I could probably talk for quite some time, but when I, and I, I do mentor quite a few young women and, and men, and there's a few things that I, I really impress upon them first. And the first I'm going to bring up is my daughter, my 22 year old, she'll be 23 in just, oh my gosh, in a couple of months. And she said something to me yesterday that made me go, oh my God, have I failed my own daughter? The first thing is you don't have to be perfect to be the right person or the perfect person for the job, for the role, for the position. I think as, as a, she, she sat across from me yesterday and she said, mom, I want to apply for this internship, except I don't think I have this and this and this. She said, she started rattling off all the criteria. And I was, I looked at her and I'm like, so, you know, my daughter's name is Sabrina. I said, Sabrina, it doesn't matter if you don't have everything. It's actually the person who's not quite the right fit that might be perfect for the job. And that same message, that same concern comes to me over and over again from 
young young women, young men, not even just young, even in older women, older, I can't apply for that job until I'm perfect enough. And I don't know the stat, I should have looked it up, but I don't know the stat, but I do know that men will apply for a role when they feel like at least, I think it's at least 50%, 50% there. Women feel like they need to be 100% or even more, or they won't be considered. But the reality is what we bring to the table outside of what's listed on a position may be what actually makes us perfect. So the first thing I tell everyone is just because you think you're not perfect for the role doesn't mean you're not perfect. You may actually be. If you want to take that left turn, you want to take a dramatic step and do something different. What you already have, your talents, your skills, your, you know, just who you are may be what actually makes you excel. Um, in my current role, I wasn't 100% fit. There are various reasons I wasn't sure I was going to apply for my current role. And a little bit was that. I had never done this before, right? And I knew there were others in the sales organization going for the same position, but I did get encouragement. And ultimately, I got the role and I, I believe I was the right person for the role because I am different and because I brought all that to the table. So that would be the first thing that I like to impress. Beautiful. Uh, I know that you have uh, more things to share. I'm going to just, that we absolutely want to get to. I'm interested in systems mm -hmm. and, you know, systemic change, system, systemic um, elements that either help or hinder. And so in your role, what have you found within the organization itself, the, the broader organization that is helping women step into their power, step into thinking they don't have to be 100%. What are some of the systems uh, elements that you have found that they, 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 were already, they were already correct working or they made changes to make it work or make it work better? Well, I think that the biggest thing was having a champion who was willing to bring me to the table and consider me for a role that I wasn't perfect in and recognizing that there's talent. So systemically, I would say that's a little tough to put a system around that, but it, it really is getting people to open their eyes to who the right candidate may or may not be. Um, I actually hired uh, very quickly a chief of staff because I know my own weaknesses when I got this role. And in my head, I had the same preconceived notions of who I thought would fit the bill. And I opened it up as legally, so systemically, we have to open it up to everyone, right? And I, I believe that especially internally. So, and this is the, the thing that I personally really need to work on changing, but internally, I do believe if anyone applies for the role, regardless of what they're doing or whether I think they qualify, I give them an interview. Because I feel like if you had the guts internally to apply for this role, I can at least give you the courtesy of the interview. And if you don't get it, I actually feel very passionately about picking up the phone and talking to them about why. Um, so I did this, right? And the person who ultimately got the role was someone I never would have even considered. But he completely wowed me with what he brought to the table. Very unique, um, amazing gentleman. And I had in my head, I wanted this other, I had actually reached out to someone, this other woman who thought a certain way, this gentleman had his own way of thinking. He came to the table with something different. And because of that, I, I ended up giving him the job and he's worked by my side and been a big part of my success over the past couple of years. So I think systemically, one of the things I think we all need to think about is we all have an image as we start to help and build and grow, but we need to let go of this idea of it has to fit what's what even I've defined. We have to open our minds and our hearts to the idea that it could be, you know, could be somebody who's been teaching for 10 years who steps into a role of that you never would have considered because of all the amazing things they've done and they can do in something completely unrelated to IT. So that's a change. A lot of people have not made that change, but I think it's a change we all need to make. My own failing is I didn't look at external resumes that way, right? So we all have areas to grow. I should have probably done that. But I think that was very eye-opening for, for me. And I think I probably opened a lot of eyes in my own application in getting this current position. 
that is a true testament to becoming self-aware and using that self-awareness to then manage how you move forward and build the right relationships. So what you're talking about is a direct um, example of why EQ is 70 to 80% of a person's success more than technical capabilities, because technical capabilities can only take us so far. So as you're talking, what's coming up for me is how do we help women understand it is not just technical capabilities that get there. You have to be fully rounded. And a lot of times what I see is women pick a field and they specialize in it and want to go as far as they can. But that doesn't get you into the C-suite. To get into the C-suite, you have to be more rounded. You need to understand strategy. You need to understand finance because you have to strategically plan a budget and then co-create the strategic future of the organization and negotiate for your entire function so that how the push and pull and the optimization works. So a lot of times women say, I can't, I'm not given a seat at the table. But are we putting all the right pieces to get there? Yes, men, when they know 50% of the stuff, they say, I can do it. But they have 50% of all of these little things, right? Yes. Whereas women have 100% of their singular focus. And that doesn't help at that table. Talk to us a little bit about how can we get the women to see the bigger picture? Wow. You know. You're taking me in another direction now, Cass. I hope to forget even what I had in mind before. But you're a hundred percent. I mean, what you're saying really resonates with me because the number one question I get asked is, "How did I change my role so many times?" I'm, I've been with the same company, which is unheard of for a really almost my entire career, but only because, and I get bored very quickly, um, because I've changed roles like significantly. And I get that asked all the time. And the biggest thing I think I try to get through is, yes, you don't have to be perfect, but also, my gosh, if a door opens for you, you need to walk through it, right? And I'm like, I have so many, I have a lot, I have a very, I'm very proud to say, I have a very um, strong female leadership in my organization, so my entire organization, but the tenure within the position blows my mind. People have done the same thing and they, they've hold on to that expertise, especially women. It gives them the security blanket that this is my worth. And the scary thing is technology is hitting us hard and fast. And you may think that this is your worth because you've been doing, you know, specific things for 10, 15 years. And I know the systems, well, guess what? Even we are going through an internal transformation. You rip out a system, everyone's starting at the same place. So why have you stayed there? And often it's because they're scared. They don't think they're enough getting back to my first point. And what I tell them is if the door opens, you walk through it. And the pushback I get is, but what if I'm not good enough? Or what if I don't like it? So the mantra, me and I have a very a close girlfriend who works with me as well. Our mantra is you can do anything for a year. You can do anything for a year. If somebody gave me an opportunity, unless it was like completely horrific, I took it. And I committed to it for a year. And if in a year's time, it didn't look like it was right, then I knew I'd move on. But I learned something from that role. And I took those tools and I put them in my little tool belt and I moved on. And ultimately, each position has helped me open the door to the next one. And, and to your point, Kaz, that is what if you want to get to the, to the C-level, to the executive level. That is what you need to do. And honestly, <laughs> we're all tying it back, Robin. That's what got what differentiated me for this current role? It was not that I had 10, 15 years of sales experience. I haven't been in sales most of my career. It was because I had done all these other things. So trying to get women to understand, just go for it. Um, the other thing I've said many, many times is, look, if a door opens and you're just quite not sure and you don't walk through it, I'm sorry, but the door may not open again for a while. So you, you've got to be aware that if you don't take the chance because you're scared, it's okay. 
but you're going to have to take some extra effort to make another door open, right? It's one of those. I also have coached a, a lot of women. If it's not the right time in your career, I get it. But I don't know that it ever will be. It's kind of like the old, uh, you know, they always say, I don't know if this resonates with you all. It's never the right time to have kids. If you wait to have kids to the right perfect time, you're never going to have kids because it's never going to be the right time to have kids. Kind of the same thing. If you feel like it's not the right time to take on a new job, it, it, you're going to be able to justify not taking on a risk or a new position. So you've got to get past that if, if that's what your, your goal is. Uh, I'm loving everything that I'm hearing, totally coming from an individual standpoint, from a systemic standpoint. We'd love to know, uh, as this wraps up, the 25 minutes always flies yes. by. Yes. Um, how can people get a hold of you if they want to learn more about you, more about what you do? And then share with us the last uh, uh, nugget or two that you like to share for the women or men who listen to this podcast when it's released. Okay. Well, okay. So first of all, I'm, I'm just me, right? So I would love to say I have a website or I have, yeah, no, you're catching me. Uh, just me. I'm, I can be found on LinkedIn and I'm under my full Matilde, which is my full Hispanic Mexican name. I go by Mati or Matilde. Europeans call me Matilde. I love the way they say it. It works out in the U S they call me Matilda. Not a fan of that. So I go by Mati, um, Pit Cannon. And you can find me, I'm at BMC Software. There's only one, although there's a famous uh, famous person with a, a second T in there. And then my husband, Yoni, has a hockey player named after him. I'm not married to the NHL player, in case you're wondering. So, But you can reach out to me on LinkedIn. I'm very active on there. Um, just connect with me in that way. And I think as far as the final thing I'll leave with everyone is at one point in time in my life, I love to present. I love to get on stage. If I had had uh, my druthers, I'd be on Broadway, which I'm not. Maybe someday, maybe when I'm 80, huh? but I'm not. Okay. I had a leader tell me I was too emotional, that I was too passionate. I was too animated. I needed to tone it down. And he was actually from another country and in a country that's known for their animation. And I thought, are you kidding? I mean, I get all sorts of praise when I present. And this, this man was telling me, no, you can't be who you are. You need to be someone else, essentially. So the last thing I'll leave is it took a lot for me to accept this is who I am and to quit toning it down because you start to tone it down and you shouldn't. You have to be true to who you are. And whoever you are, you're going to have your own special gifts, your own quirks, your own way of presenting things. Don't let someone shut that down. I had a really amazing coach tell me, it may not be that your gifts are, are right for the company. The company's just not right for you. Like you need to take your gifts and move somewhere else. You don't need to change who you are. So what I would impress on anyone is never change who you are. Don't change the way you look. Don't change the way you act. If you like to tell quirky stories, you know what? It's okay. Be your authentic self. And if you're in an environment where you feel like you can't be your authentic self, it might be time to change the environment. So I think that's the last little bit. Beautifully said, Matthew. It has been an amazing conversation. Thank you so much for coming and sharing this 25 minutes with us. And please don't make this the last one. We would love to stay in touch. You're part of the Women Investing in Women community now. And we hope to build with you and leverage your expertise to help build the right environment for the women out there all over the world. It's going to take all of us together to get us there. And to our audience out there, you heard Matthew just say, when a door opens, walk through. You know, every time you see a bird sitting on a branch, I learned from Mother Nature, the bird is not sitting on the branch because it has faith that the branch won't break. It's sitting on the branch because it has faith in its own ability to fly. All we need to do is take a page from Mother Nature. And you know what? If there is no door, talk somebody into building a door for you. That's possible too. So go out there and fly as high as you can, as often as you can. And wherever there is no door, have somebody build a window have somebody build a door, have somebody build a big bondo garage door, 
people will meet you where you are. If you show up with joy and confidence and joy is a necessary ingredient so that you can live your journey with happiness. And with that, you will find your peace. Love that. Thank you, Kaz. Kaz, thank you, Robin. I appreciate it. Thank you for letting me be on the show. <laughs>